of the world's leading scientists here to help educate all of us so that it can be clear that accelerated approval is necessary to save this generation of boys. This is the forefront of a new kind of medicine, personalized medicine. Um, we need to pave the way. If we don't pave the way, it will be decades before those other drugs are in the clinic and in, in the kids. And that's going to be in life or death for my son, Charlie. It, the feeling of knowing that this is here and it's not accessible to us is, there's, there's no word to describe. I'm Christy McSherry, I come from Pembroke, Massachusetts. My son has a disease called Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is the number one childhood disorder, fatal childhood disorder in our country today, but very few people are aware of it. Um, it affects about one in 3,500 male births, and boys typically die by the time they're 19, sometimes 20, sometimes 22. The takeaway from there is that they always die. Here today, we want to discuss the fact that the FDA has tools that were passed by Congress with the direct intent of getting medications like Atetlipsin to children like ours as quickly as possible. Please understand that these men, along with the other researchers and clinicians that were in the room with us yesterday, have decades more experience in Duchenne research and treatment than anyone that sits inside the building at the FDA. Dr. Wilton, on the far right is the man that first successfully accomplished exon skipping in the mouse model of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Dr. Kunkel in the middle um, from Harvard University is the man who led the team that originally discovered the dystrophin gene that has the genetic defect that causes Duchenne. And Dr. Mandel is the primary investigator for Tuplerson, and he's also the researcher and clinician who has been the primary investigator for more clinical trials on Duchenne than any other doctor in the world. So if they're not going to listen to us, they need to listen to them, and we're concerned that that's not happening. So what I've been asked to do is give you a, a rundown on molecular genetics and how this therapy works. And I'd also like to note that um, there's been extensive funding from the NIH and the NBA. So I've been working for more than 30 years on this disorder, and I look at this decade as the decade of therapy. And um, I really have two messages that I'd like to convey during this very brief time that I have and as being the principal investigator for the Atkinson trial. The major message is, which is truly incredible, is that this drug works. So I want to lay out the two timelines so you can understand what happens if, the, on the one hand, the FDA acts as authorized and uses the accelerated approval approach and the consequences if the agency fails to do so. Four years is too late to keep Aiden out of a permanent wheelchair. Four years is too late for every boy when the data we have already show that the drug is safe and effective. And it will be a decade or more before my own son sees a treatment. In that case, my son will likely die. We are not so much in a race against the science as we are in a race against the clock. We absolutely will find a treatment for Duchenne, but will we find it in time for the families that are sitting in this room? In my home, I'm faced with this stark reality on a daily basis. I was lucky enough to have one son, Max, who's on a Tuplerson, but his older brother, Austin, is not. He's already on ambulatory. In the last two and a half years, well, Max has gained back his independence. Currently, this minute, Austin is losing the ability to feed himself. We have a unique opportunity. This generation, our children, could be the last generation of Duchenne patients to die. Or it could be the first generation to survive this disease. We are that close. But it will only happen if the FDA does the right thing. They need to listen to the researchers, examine the science, and operate under the provisions of FIDASIA. We are asking Congress to exercise its oversight of the FDA and to make sure that the FDA is using the tools like the Accelerated Approval Program. We are asking them to follow the law that Congress passed, and we are asking them to do it now. 
One of the slides that Dr. Mendel showed you was from 48 weeks into this clinical trial. That was in October 2012. We are now at 120 weeks. That's two years and three months of treatment with no side effects, dystrophin being produced, and clinical benefit. Our kids are missing dystrophin, which is a tragedy, but our government is missing the opportunity to change that, which is a travesty.